We're back again, it's a new week, it's a new system. This is a My64 running Ryzen and it is running it absolutely fantastically. I'm so happy with the results that we've got this week. We've been testing it all week, so let's dive into it. Before we get started, please click that subscribe button, turn notifications on and give us a huge thumbs up if you think what we're doing is good. So this is what it's all about. I've been waiting for this uh, cooler to turn up. We were going to do the i3, the cooler turned up and I thought, no, nope, I'm doing the Ryzen and I'm so glad I did. It is fantastic. You might be able to hear the fan whizzing away. That's not just because it's got on the website. We've got Assassin's Creed Odyssey running and it, it's just fantastic. It's brilliant. So as you can see, we've got a good frames a good frame rate, uh, around about, it's averaging out about 28 to 30 frames a second, which I'm happy with. And we're on around about 65 degrees, goes up to about 68, maybe 70, but averaging around about 65, 65 now. It's just fantastic. It's a modern gaming PC now, and it's, it's great. So I, I just want to keep this as brief as I can. So. We'll just crack on, show you how to build the thing, and then we'll do some testing afterwards. Just, it's, it's, I can't wait to show you this, it's brilliant. So before we begin, try and keep your build to the same build as this. Keep the same motherboard and the same chip. The reason being, I've gone through a few different motherboards that don't work for the for the AMD full chipset. So this motherboard's very good for this. I recommend it. Components required for this build. We need an ASRock B550M ITX. This is the AM4 mini ITX motherboard we need for this. We need an AMD Ryzen 3 4350G. Don't forget the G because that means it's got integrated graphics. We need two um, sticks of 16 gigabyte DDR4 RAM, as is listed there. We need a Kingston A2500 gigabyte or larger NVMe M.2 hard drive. That goes straight onto the motherboard. We need a Pico PSU 150 watt. I would have liked 160 watt, but it doesn't fit. So 150 watts the the largest Pico PSU we can get. We need a 150 watt 12 volt 12.5 amp AC adapter with a 2.5 mil uh, output that fits the Pico PSU. We need a mini SATA power data cable for the SATA slimline optical drive. I recommend 400 to 500 mil in length, otherwise it won't fit. A Sega Barracuda 4 terabyte 2.5 inch SATA hard drive. So this is a, a mechanical hard drive, but you can use a solid state if you like, if your budget allows you to do that. We need an ID cooling IS30 low profile heat sink and fan for the AMD AM4 chipset. Now it has to be 30 mil tall. Currently that's the only one that fits our build. Uh, we need an extra fan, 40 bar, 40 bar, 10 mil brushless fan with a good two, two to 300 millimeter in length for the wire and it has to have a three pin plug. And we need good quality double sided tape, um, 10 mil, 20 mil wide or inch wide. And that is for putting the fan into place. This is all available from miniitx.com. Tools required. We need an ESD wrist strap. I've got a different one in this video, I'll explain. We need some side cut pliers, scissors, Phillips screwdriver or small screwdriver set. Most importantly of all, we need a MyVic 20 or, uh, in, in, for in this instance, a My64 to create this build. Okay, so I've taken the liberty of taking the top of the case off. I've also undone the hard drive cradle and the reason I've done that is because I want to one fit a DVD or a blu-ray drive in this and two I want to fit a hard drive a solid state two and a half inch hard drive so under the hard drive there are 
screws, screw holes, four screw holes. And if you have a look under the plate, under the hard drive cradle, there's four corresponding holes there, countersunk holes. So what you do is you line the holes up like that and put the screws in. However, like Blue Peter in the UK, here's one I made earlier, so it's all ready to go in. So we're gonna go ahead and screw that in. There's four screws underneath. I'm trying to, to run through this really quick, hence why I've taken some shortcut. I've also taken the optical hard drive cradle that makes it look like uh, an optical drive, but really it holds a hard drive. I've taken that out on this one I've made earlier and put the Blu-ray drive in. It's only a matter of taking it out and re-screwing the new one in. And I thought, you don't need to see that. That's not rocket science. Again, we're um, not pinching these up. We're just putting them in and then the final pinch at the end I can line it up, make sure it's in line on the end, which it is. So these are so precise, they tend to line themselves up as they tighten up. So it's not too bad, really. Okay, so that part of it's done. The blue tape, uh, the green tape, uh, by the way, is just so that I know that this is in shot when I put it, place it back down. Okay, so we'll move this out of the way for the time being because we're going to work on this. Now, I have already fitted all this and had it running and I've taken everything back out and tried my best to fit it into its, into its packaging as it was. Obviously, it's not 100%, but it's as good as I can get. Okay, so this is the famous, uh, what's the name of it? ID cooling, and it's an IS30. And I've been waiting for a few weeks for this to come. And I must admit, it's a, it's a unique piece of kit. I mean, without this, we wouldn't be able to put the Ryzen chip in. So it is, it's fantastic. So what we've got to do is open this box up. And we've got to find the right brackets for the Ryzen chip because this is this can fit a multitude of different chips and how you do that is on these brackets uh, you're looking for AM4 that's an AM4 and that is an AM4 right so these aren't needed so we can put them back away and we need the four screws and these are the screws that we need. Okay, so what we do is we screw these in and they, they point in this direction so they face away from each other, making sure the standoffs are facing up. There is a video you can watch of this. It was about one and a half minutes long and it the, the video is self-explanatory. This is how I've learned how to do it because you get instructions I've thrown the instructions away and the reason I've done that is because it's the smallest booklet you can ever imagine and you need a telescope to read the writing on it and it's so vague I had to take photographs with my iPhone other phones were available I had to take photographs and zoom in and the and it was so the instructions weren't very good so it's best to um watch the video so I advise you I'll have a link in in this so I'd advise you to watch the video something else on here that's already been taken off there's a bit of cellophane that wraps around easy peel off uh, take that off because otherwise this isn't gonna sit onto the chip and and uh, do its job okay so the next thing we need this is a, a plastic block and you push out the washers the nylon washers but they're already done because I've already done this so that's that we need four of these one two so this is the screws that's going to screw this onto the 
motherboard itself. So I'm going to put them, they need the nylon washers on them. So two have got them on them already. There we go. Okay, that's that, that's that. We don't need any of this. So we'll put that in the box for later. Now this motherboard, if you watched our last video, it was an embedded board. So we didn't have to do any of this, it was already done for us. But on this one, we have to do this, this work. And this is, um, this is the complicated, well it's not complicated, but this is the bit that could go wrong. I, uh, let's have a look. I'm looking for this. Well, I've got a new little gadget. This is from a, a place in the UK called RS Components. So it's a wrist anti-static wrist strap. But instead of a crocodile clamp, we've got a plug that plugs in the UK sockets, and it gets its earth from. So from this office, I've got the earth, so I don't have to. I don't have to worry about uh, the constraints of the... I'll tell you what, I'll put it in over here because I am right-handed and so it's on my left hand out the way. So that's plugged in and you don't have to have the power switched on because it's taking its... the earth's always live, if you, if you know what I mean. The earth's always connected. That's a better way of describing it. So I'm connected to earth. Uh, it's nice and tight. I'll make it a little bit tighter and we're good to go so we're going to open this up uh, we've got our instruction book use your manual whatever you want to call it this is the motherboard uh, we've got the IO plate some SATA cables and two sticks of RAM so these are the sticks of RAM so what we're going to do is what we've done before and that is build this on top of the box. I like building it on top of the box. It keeps it it's top of the tabletop and you've got it's closer to you, you don't have to bend to it. You've got more maneuverability with it. So here we have the motherboard, that's the rear IO panel. And the next thing we're gonna do is get the chip. Where's the chip? There it is. So this is what it's all about. This is the Ryzen chip. It's a little bit dirty because I've had to wipe the grease off because obviously I've already had this in place. But it's rather, to be fair, it's quite a lump. It's quite heavy, but uh, it is fantastic. So if I bring this up, you can see on this corner here, you can see a yellow, uh, sorry, a golden triangle. And that indicates that's telling you to locate the golden triangle on the socket, which is here. So it's it's on the, if you look at it from where you're looking from above, it's on that side there. So uh, that's what we need to do. But I've just thought of something. Before I do that, I better take these mounts off. These are the mounts for the stock cooler. We don't need them, so I better take them off. Get them off before we do anything else. Ever so easy to do this. You, do, you don't have to touch the motherboard until you've undone everything. So, and you just take them off. And then you lift the motherboard up and the base plate, you just move it out of the way. So, that's gone. Then we put this back down and then we get back to it. So I'm gonna line this up You've got a, um, a lever here, so you, you pull it out this way, only slightly, and then just lift it up. And now that's, lot, that's basically, everything's open, ready for this to slot into place. So remember, the, um, the golden triangle lines up with the triangle that's embossed onto the socket. And we should find that that drops straight in, look, it just has. As soon as it's dropped into place, Pull the lever down and let it click into place. That's the central processing unit or the uh, the graphics processing unit that is uh, in place. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do is get the grease that come with the IS30. I hate getting these things out. I can never break the seal. I've done it this time, right? So we put the grease on. 
I'll just put four dollops in the corners. And that's enough. That's generally what you get. That's generally enough. You can get bigger tubes, but that's fine. That's plenty. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to put it round so that the curves on the pipes here are facing that way, which which would be facing the, in the direction of what used to be the card reader. And we're just going to mount it on. And then this is going to wobble a little bit because it's sliding on the grease. And then what we're going to do is turn this upside down onto the foam. And you can see the four screw holes. So you get your screws, making sure the, the nylon washers or fibre washers are on them. And put them down one by one. Remember we're not doing them up tight. We're going to just pin, we're just not, it's not even a pinch. We're just taking them up. To the point where they they can another pinch and they will be tight and then what we do is we do it corner to corner to tighten them so I don't know why I use that one this is the one I need to use sorry if I'm knocking the camera right so I'm going to tighten this one up and then I'm going to do the opposite corner and this one look at me shaking Again, not too tight, because as we're doing this, we're bowing the board. We don't want to do it too tight, just enough. Let's have a look at that board. That's okay. Okay, so what we need to do now is locate the uh, CPU fan uh, pins, which I do believe... I was going to put my glasses on, but they're already on. There we, there we go. So... Gonna do let's put that on there like that it's done we can we can sort these wires out later but we'll just tuck them around there for now no we won't we just let them hang right next thing to do is the memory or the ram okay I'm gonna bring it around this way so that I can work with it Okay, so make sure these two la uh, latches, so they, they go up, but we want to make sure they're clicked down. The RAM is, again, it's got a, it's got a, a slit in it and it's offset and that's so you can't put this around the wrong way. So if you, if you lower this into position, you can see the slits aren't going to line up. Take it out and spin it around the other way and then it should just go straight in and the way I do this is I always push one side at a time sometimes it's best to grab the bottom of the motherboard and do it and as you push it down the latch is the lug is going to come up and lock it into place so that's one stick in second stick Again, I've got it around the wrong way, so turn it around the right way. Make sure the lug's out. Down, grab all of the bottom of the motherboard, clicked in. So that's RAM installed. Next thing is we're going to install a M.2 hard drive, solid state hard drive. This is something like 35 times faster than a either a solid state or a, I think it's I think it's 35 times faster than the normal solid state I can't remember now but you get the gist it's very fast okay so let's get this RAM I haven't got the proper case this RAM come in I've thrown it away um, okay so the RAM again if I lift this up you can see it's got a slit in it and it's offset and that's so you can't put it in around the wrong way so I've got to put it around this way I'm going, to leave, I'm going to leave it up this end, it's sticking up about an inch, and then I'm going to push it in, and then I'm going to let it go. And this is the heat sink that goes on top of it and locks it into position. Now that came with a bit of t tape to peel it off, so presumably that's sort of like a similar thing to... Uh, thermal grease but uh, it's like a double-sided tapey type thing so we're going to put this on top 
and put the screws back in. So we've already gone, we've already installed the CPU, the heat sink, the fan, the RAM, the, the hard drive. I'm going to do these right, I'm just going to pinch them a little bit. Okay, there's only one more thing to install and then we can put this into the case and that is <coughs> the uh, Pico PSU this is 150 watt this is the largest one you can get that fits in the case the 160 watt doesn't fit it's too big it, it bottoms out on the um, keyboard so again this has got a lug on it so you push it down it only goes one way round you push it down so if you find you're putting it in the wrong way you, I mean if you've got the RAM in then this won't physically fit in because the RAM's in the way anyway but if you haven't got the RAM in if it doesn't even line up with the plugs you've got it around the wrong way it only goes in one way again I'm going to hold on to the underneath and just push it down till it clicks and that's it we're ready now to install this into the case okay so I've got my case in place I'm going to bring over I'm strapped back up with the um, anti-static wrist strap. So I'm going to bring in the the IO shield. Now, what's good about this one is it's insulated, and it hasn't got any of those horrible tags on the undersides that get in the way. So all we're going to do is lay this on top, and then we're just going to slot this in. There's a slit down this side of the case and we're going to line it up with a lip on the IO shield and slide it down until it goes into place and then once we've done that what I'm going to do is put the screws in to secure it into place so we've got two bags we've got a bag of cable ties and panel mount uh, I keep on saying panel mount cable ties and cable mounts and we've got some card reader, uh, card reader and motherboard screws there's only motherboard screws in the bag because the card reader screws are used on this metal plate that's in place of the card reader and um, people were asking me why isn't there a card reader in with the pack I do apologise but the card readers we had didn't fit very well and they were playing up some worked some didn't so I I decided to pull the plug as it were and not put them in the kits but we are ordering some more card readers and they're not going to be delivered until December stroke January uh, and as soon as we get them we'll be putting them back in but anyone that buys a case that does want one we'll send that out afterwards so it's not to worry if you just just let us know um, by email that, that'd be fine okay so that's put in I just want to make sure that the IO shield is slotted into the bottom okay and it's not so remember me saying about never do the screws up what did I just do I did the screws up couldn't move it I just release them off a little bit I just want to make sure that this is slotting in There we go, it's in place now, that's it. Okay, so that's in. I can do these back up now. Just want to push down on it, make sure it's in place. Okay, so there is a couple of points underneath that touches the bottom of the case. And we did look at putting a couple of nylon washers or four nylon washers to lift the motherboard off the bottom of the case. But it's only a couple of little places. And to be fair, it's not worth it. It's, it's really not worth it. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. Um, so it's best to just leave it as, as, as intended. It screws straight to the case because all you're doing is if you raise the bottom up, you're just bringing this fan closer to the keyboard. So it's really not worth the aggro. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do 
is we're going to need some of that double sided tape I was on about. Just had to find it then. So the best place to put the tape is I think on the end so it, it locks that cable in place. So we're going to stick it on there. Okay, I'm just going to work out whereabouts I want to cut it. Now I advise you using scissors, it's just that I haven't got any so I'm going to use this box knife, box blade, box cutter blade. I think that's what you call them. Um, So you, this is out of shot, but I've just cut it to fit over that. Okay, so we're just making sure that's secured. I'm going to just cut the end bit off, both sides. It's out of shot, so you can't see me using a horrible blade. Okay, so all I'm going to do is peel that off like that and that's ready but the next thing I wanted to do before I do that is undo these metal plates these card uh, the, the replacement to the card reader I just want to undo this because I want to feed the power into position the power socket that's so going to go around there that's going to go in there but what we're going to do would be better to actually put this in I think so I've just got to make sure I've got it around the right way just trying to think yeah so that's it so we want to make it so that the wires are facing out that way as they go into the into the motor so the picture that's on the front face is facing out and then you know that it's and it's, it's extracting so I'm just going to put that there trying to keep it as level as I can that's not very level and my god is this tape good this is like a 3m tape others are available but I can't move that now that's in place um, what I'm also going to do is wrap this wire around this post for added security right and it's out the way cable management it's nice and neat I'm making the cable management up as I go if, if you know what I mean I'm not I haven't got I haven't got a grand scheme of how to do it I'm just thinking that looks nice and neat that's not going to get in the way of anything. It's not going to get in the way of any moving in parts. So now I'm putting the socket on. First thing to go on is the washer, then the thumb nut, which screws on clockwise. Try not to get it on cross threaded, which I'll keep doing. No, that's okay. I'm not going to tighten it right up until this metal plate's put into place. So when we put the metal plate on, we want to make sure that all the wires are locked underneath it, like that, so that they can't make their way out. Wires move. You'd be surprised how much wires can move around when you think they're never going to move. Okay, the next thing we want to use do is those of you the, those of you that have seen the the other video this wire we didn't need on the last build so we actually unplugged it from the PQ PSU but we're not going to do it on this one we're actually going to put this in its place again it's got a little lug on it like the PQ power did and it goes in one position over here right next to the IO shield we've got a close-up of this or we will have when I've finished and just push it down until it clicks into place now that wire where it is is in a pretty good place I'm happy with it there we could 
put it we could put a cable tie there later on in the build something else we've got to do is plug this fan power block into place now I've, I'll do the same thing but the power to that is just just down here next to the RAM modules just gonna click that into place it only goes in one way there we go that's in place and that's very neat okay so we're getting there now there's not much left to do again this I'm thinking I could probably feed that with the help of a screwdriver to pull it through and I have I've managed to feed that through there so it's out the way now there's a lot of things around this fan but um, as long no I don't like that the fan could catch that where else are we going to put this I'm trying to find a place that's not hot we could feed it under this side use this again the screwdriver to pull it through now one thing that, that um, I've got to keep reminding myself and that is to make sure no wires go near the screw holes for when we put the top case back on because you could put a screwdriver straight or a screw straight through one of the wires okay it's looking good next thing I want to do is connect the bottom hard drive so uh, this is a SATA cable that come with the motherboard so I want to plug that in and it goes in one way plug it into the motherboard right next to the PICU power okay and that's actually going in quite a good place the next thing I want to do is plug in the power to the hard drive again that only goes in one way uh, once you've lined the once you know which way round you're putting it it should it should go in just with a little click right something else I want to do this Molex plug I want to I want to tape that with double sided tape to the base of the case so it doesn't come up and cause mischief but the first thing I want to do is plug in this slimline laptop cable now if I get this close up you can see this is a, a, a thinner one than, than the standard because it's for a laptop this only goes in one way so let's have a look line this up and that's the way it goes and the other thing is this is extra long this is quite long because on this the SATA cable the connectors are right down here and I did have a smaller one and it didn't fit so I had to get this I just had lucky enough I had one of these in stock it's an old one but it's working fine for this build so I'm plugging that in there and what I want to do is I've already done this earlier again when I cut the bit of double-sided tape for the fan I had a bit left over so here it is it's just a little piece and I'm just going to put it on the bottom of this Molex block so that it can stick it basically it's just keeping it it's, it's it's to do with cable management it's to stop these cables because they move around it's to stop them coming up and the worst thing that can happen to this case the worst thing that can happen to this build is a wire move into the fan area this fan area because it will cause all sorts of damage probably damage the fan and we don't want that so this is the way to eliminate that okay so that's ready to stick into place but what I want to do is again these Molex connectors only go one way but just a rule of thumb red to red just make sure they're lining up and the way to do this is come in at a slight angle and they always slot together quite nice 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is do I put that which way round do I do that? Let's have a look. If I put that in there like that, I'll do it like that. So I'm going to try and make it so that this sticks away from a from a vent, which it does. And it conveniently, the wire's gone up and over. I don't mind that, that's fine. Okay, so it's just about pulling these wires down so they're out of the way of the keyboard when that comes in. And having a look and thinking, right, because we're finished now, that's everything in place, apart, oh, apart from the chassis fan. So we can put this in place with the finger guard and we'll feed that underneath there and we've got to find where this goes. Ah, it goes in here. So this this board can take two chassis fans, which is really good because it saves us having to purchase another cable. But I want it to go in without sticking up. No, I think I've got it, that's it. So to be fair, this build as it stands at the moment, Without any cable ties, I haven't used one cable tie mount at the moment. Um, they've gone really, it's, the build has gone really well. I'm very happy with it. I'm gonna use one cable tie over here. If I can get it through. And that's gonna do two jobs. I want it to go and hold this wire into place and also Also, I want it to, to, to hold into the, the um, CPU fan, the power to that, so it's all clamping them into place. They're out the way. Get our side cutters and cut that off. So everything is out the way. There's nothing in, in, in the vicinity at all of this fan. So. We, we've done really well, and I forgot to put my wrist strap on, but we haven't been working direct with the motherboard anyway, so I think that's all right. Now, on the when I built this last time, I decided to put a few cable ties around this area, but that's the problem with this cable, by the way. It's, it's old and used, and the spring section of it's missing, but you won't have to worry about that, so that's just come out, but... Um, that's that wouldn't happen to your build that's just because this is an old wire and it's kind of broke but it's it's doing what I want it to do what I could do to stop that from happening again is I could put a, ta a cable tie and cable tie it to this one that is locked into place because it's got the spring on it and that will stop that lifting up and that in in that sense I won't need to get a new cable because that's locked in now anyway okay so that's ready for the keyboard to go on okay I said uh, we, we haven't used anything yet we're about to now so I'm gonna grab a cable tie in fact I'm gonna tip these out um, this is a cable tie mount and what we're gonna do is we're going to thread a cable tie through it before we actually stick it down because if you try and do it afterwards you never end up being able to thread the cable tie through so we've got that in place and I'm just gonna bend the cable tie like that and actually use it to sort of like plunge the pad into the right position that's the right position then we're gonna get these cables and we're going to cable tie them there. I'm happy with that position. I think that's good. What we're trying to do here is make them come into a position where they're not in the way of the fan because the fan's in this area. So we don't want the cables coming down to the plugs, to their plug positions, and and getting anywhere near that. So the next thing I'm going to do 
is because these cables that are coming from the switch are all independent, they're all separate from each other, I thought it would be a good idea to put a cable tie here to, to join them up so that they're as one if you know what I mean. Again this is all a part of keeping the build nice and tidy because we don't want loads of cables all over the show. So that's ready so let's bring in the motherboard again. Remembering to keep our strap on. Okay so the keyboard's going here and then we're just going to bring in these cables. So we've got the first one which I'm um, don't worry, I'm putting these in for speed, but don't worry, there's pictures. In fact, I'll put the small ones in first. So difficult to see them. So it's just a case of putting the plus and minus around the right way and putting them in the right putting them on the right pins so that's the LED light and now we're doing the power switch that's in place and remember I've, I've already taken pictures of this so you really can't go wrong and the only thing in the whole build that can be plugged in around the wrong way is this and this is the USB header basically it's the keyboard uh, USB cable and you can plug it in the wrong way but I've given you the instructions that comes with the case to show you how to put it around the right way and I've also got close-up pictures of all the plug-in points on this so uh, that is ready to go now the other thing I wanted to explain quickly is I can't remember if I've mentioned it before but always make sure that these cables are as close to the uh, motherboard of the keyboard as possible in fact it wouldn't hurt I haven't got any here but if you had any insulation tape it wouldn't hurt if you put a put across it just to tie it down but um, we won't need to do that that's fine there is one more thing I want to do before I put the keyboard into place and that is put another cable tie if I've got one I'm sure we've got another cable tie yeah put another cable tie on these because they they look like they could be a nuisance they're all separated they're not as one if if you know what I mean so if we cable tie them up like that they're all going to move into one as one in one position and what we want to do is as we pull this down we want this cable to go that way away from this so it's just keeping an eye on it as I mean it's already gone miles away from it it's nowhere near it so we know that we're we're all right for that so it's just a matter of lining it up sometimes it's better to do it from the back so I know that the cable's miles away from it, it's nowhere near it, so it's just a matter of lining it up. And that's it. So that is ready to rock and roll. So uh, you've got your, your laptop brick to plug in. So basically we're crack on and I'll show you it working, running a couple of games. Uh, thanks for watching this. It's been it's been emotional. Okay, so it's back up and running, and we've had some tests going to show you. So this is heavy load, and I've got it maxed out on pretty much everything, and we're running at sixty six degrees. So that's. Uh, 100% on the CPU, the GPU is running at 66 degrees and it's got a 69% load but not only have I got this running but I've got my favourite game running in the background which is Half-Life 2 so this is Half-Life 2 running at the same time we're on 161 frames per second on Half-Life 2 okay I know it's an old game but I just think it's amazing that 
when I purchased Half-Life 2 all those years ago, what, 13, 14 years ago, I had to spend about 300 quid on a graphics card to run it at a, a, a respective rate. And here we are with pretty much integrated graphics and it's, it's just amazing. Apart from the fact it's just crashed. That's probably because of all the the heavy load that I've got running in the background. So, uh, you know, it's just brilliant. So that's this, and I, I want to show you something else as well. So bear with me. Okay, so this is Destiny, Destiny 2. It's pretty dark, this thing, but um, it's locked in at 30 frames a second. So you're not going to be able to see much of this. I'm, I'm having trouble seeing it, but um, it's pretty good. I'm happy with it. Graphics are quite good. Let's see if I can see some baddies to shoot, so you can see some action. And again, this is probably leveling, leveling out at about 65 degrees. There's a baddie. That was good. I enjoyed that. <laughs> But um, I think you can see that the potential of this, it's, 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 it's a, a nice little gaming machine now, um, and it's ideal. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I've tried to keep it as short as possible, and as informative in that time as, as it could be. And I hope it's convinced you to purchase a My64 or My Vic 20 because in doing so, you're helping us to develop new things uh, that we're looking at bringing out. We're looking at bringing out multi-coloured versions of these. We're looking at bringing power supplies that are in the form of the old C64 power supply. We're looking at bringing lots of different things out, but we can't do that without your help. So I hope it's convinced you. I, th I think this is this is my this is going to be my retro computer. This is what I'm going to be doing all my work on. In fact, this video is going to be composed on this. This is my new computer, it's fantastic. And finally, we can actually say that this is a computer that can do quite a lot of different things now. You know, with, with the other video, not so much. This is fantastic. So thanks very much for watching. And I hope it's, if anything, it's given you a little bit of information, you know, and um, you've enjoyed watching the video, but thanks very much.